right, so we're going to go over healing of specific conditions. <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go over obstacles of healing after this chapter because we're doing really good on time. Um, so we're assuming that any obstacles have been dealt with first, okay? Uh, which they're the preliminary steps when you're dealing with ministry. And I'm sure y'all have ministered before where you felt like someone had unforgiveness or unbelief or something like that. So y'all have encountered obstacles already. But I want to read um, the, uh, the paragraphs that are physical conditions in which improvement can readily and promptly be determined. So I'm going to read all those paragraphs real quick. So with some conditions, improvement or change can be readily assessed. These include many conditions of pain, like pain in the ankle, leg, or arm, or pain in the back or neck, pain in the joint, as from arthritis, etc. They can also include stiff or immovable joints, inability to perform some kind of motion, such as bending over and straightening up again, blindness and deafness, and warts. Hmm. Yeah, you can see those disappear. Tumors, things like that. So anything visible, you know, that you can, you can see or feel. Um, in the case of such conditions, very short prayers are appropriate, each followed by a question to see whether the pray, prayer brought, brought movement of the pain. That's important because it'll try to move. That kind of tells you you might be dealing with the spirit if it's moving all over the place. Mm -hmm. Lessening or worsening of the pain, which worsening can also be a sign of a demon spirit, or other condition prayed for, or other change. As noted in the general section on prayer, if a prayer seems to be effective, bless what God is doing and repeat prayer until progress stops. The person ministry might begin with such prayers or he might begin with a general prayer for healing and move on to specific prayers if general prayer does not result in complete healing. The method followed in these examples can be used in any situation where improvement or change of the sick person's condition is readily apparent to the observer or to the person receiving ministry. Several such situations are listed on the following pages with some steps a person ministry might follow if you use that message. So as we go through these briefly, person A is the one receiving prayer and person P is the one praying. Okay? So the interview, which we've gone over in past training, so if you've not gone through that, watch the videos. I believe it was, um, I'm not mistaken, it was the first um, set of five where we talked about this. When has a condition started? Um, did anything happen at that time that was traumatic? You know, the whole nine yards, okay? Ask them if they've seen a doctor. If so, does the doctor know what the cause is? Um, I usually ask them if they've seen a doctor and if they've gotten a diagnosis for one purpose, a name. Because every name has to bow to the name of Jesus. So I want a name, and then I can go after the name. Did y'all hear that? Yes, that's awesome. Okay, so when I am asking a person if they've been to a doctor, the only reason I'm asking them is so I can get the name of the diagnosis, the disease, mm -hmm. because every name has to bow to the name of Jesus. So I want that name. Um, and then you might ask uh, if they've got any you know, issues of forgiveness or repentance that needs to occur, um, which you know we've kind of talked about that already a little bit. Now, uh, I like... Um, asking Holy Spirit to come and, you know, like Holy Spirit come or uh, I release Holy Spirit's presence or even acknowledging do you feel the presence of Holy Spirit. So if I begin to feel heat or if I begin to feel His peace or His presence or something like that, I will ask them if they are, because usually they are. Sometimes you're like, no. <laughs> but sometimes they are. So, um, but just, uh, you know, Holy Spirit come with your healing power or something that simple. But one thing that I tend to do, um, especially if I'm like dealing with people out in public or I know someone's rushed, I don't take my time. So, um, and we've talked about this before, but just be conscious of feeling pressure to hurry. Now, sometimes you may have to hurry. You know, they're needing to work, so you're not going to have a lot of time. But you know what I mean? Like, just because you're out in public, and I think part of the reason we do that is because we don't want to impose on their time, or we think they'll want us to hurry up or something, but you know what? They'll be very happy when they're healed. Mm -hmm. So um, what he says is uh, to be quiet for a moment or two, like after you release Holy Spirit, to just you know tell them, I'm just going to 
you know, be quiet for a minute to see what God wants to do. Um, and then ask them, do you feel anything in your body? And that's important because when you ask them if they're feeling anything in their body, and they say, yeah, I feel like a tingling, or I feel like a heat, or whatever, then what's, or I feel like just really peaceful, then you say, now that's Holy Spirit. So they know He's working. He's doing something. So just stressing that to them. Why? Because you're building faith. Okay, that's a whole thing. It's just trying to get them to that place where they can get their miracle. So, uh, if they go, no, I'm not feeling anything, you know, okay, well, Holy Spirit, I ask that your presence, like, like let them feel your presence in Jesus' name, or something like that. Um, and then, at this point of just ministering Holy Spirit's presence, they might be healed 100%. You don't have to do anything else. That's fun, mm -hmm. okay? So know that. I mean, you might be like, okay, well, do you have pain or anything? No, it's gone. You know? So then you're like, shoot, good. I don't have to do anything else. <laughs> they're, they're healed. Now, back pain, um, this is so crazy. He's talking about doing the whole thing that we do with the hands and the feet. And I'm like, my bananas for years. This is so cool. So he talks about that a little bit. <coughs> um, now, with pain, so after you've done the preliminaries, which is what we just went over, okay, interview, when did this start, had it been diagnosed, um, Holy Spirit come. After the preliminaries, if there's pain in an unknown part of the body, so it's not, or an unknown cause of pain in the body, um, command the pain to go. Um, any spirit of pain to leave, I'm going to spit on myself. Uh, any <laughs> afflicting spirit to go, afflicting spirit, I always forget about that one, um, but a spirit of affliction, if there's any not torn, you know, damage or a broken bone, um, you know, release healing into that. Any damaged nerves, release healing into that. Um, damaged tissue to be healed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, uh, but those two things: the spirit of pain and afflicting spirit. Now, the lady in the Bible that had the curved back, mm -hmm. she was bent over. The Lord called that a spirit of infirmity. So. Just because it's pain doesn't mean a spirit of infirmity is not attacking. Okay? Uh, pain caused by bruise, fracture, or strain. The bruise be healed. The swelling go down. I'm sure y'all have done that before. You said the first we commit the swelling to leave. Injured blood vessels be healed. Fracture to be healed. Various types of damage caused by the strain to be healed. When my foot was prayed for, they would do that at the, you know, they would release healing, command the bones to mend. But you know what was, I think, made it even more powerful is with the, the, the release of healing, they were telling me what they were seeing prophetically. Mm -hmm. I see you dancing before the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, it was anything to do with feet. And, the, and I kept getting the same word everywhere I went. So with the prophetic word can be released healing. That's great. Okay? So y'all can do that. Headache other than a migraine. Um, command a headache to leave. A spirit of headache. This one's good. The blood vessels in the back of the neck, neck to relax, open up, and release pressure. I thought that was a good one. Why well, was it a migraine? I don't know. Because I've had two people go to migraine. And my the wife hasn't gotten it back. The only thing I can think of is maybe he thinks it's a demon. Mm -hmm. But he didn't go in it later, so I don't know why that's not in there. But <coughs> to me, just go after migraines. Now, when I've gone with migraines or gone after migraines, one thing that I've done too is I'll come in, especially in women, I'll come in their hormones to stabilize because that's usually, that's usually what's going on with women. Um, but not always. Uh, let's see. Ask Father to heal any injury and to release any fear that's causing a headache. Now that's interesting. Okay? So sometimes fear can. And what does stress fall under? Fear. So a lot of times people are having stress headaches. And where it's at is important too. If it's back here, more than likely it's tension. Or fear. If it's up here, it could be like a migraine coming, or it could be, you know, um, you just need to uh, release healing for, you know, the blood pressure, whatever. And, and make note of that too. I mean, they might be having a headache because your blood pressure is high or dizzy, you know. So, interview, make sure you do that. Short arm and legs, we've already been doing that, so I don't need to uh, go through any of that. I, I thought that was so cool. Um, 
one thing he does point out is if they have a back problem, lifting their feet can bring excruciating pain. So don't lift it high enough to cause pain when you're getting them in position. You don't have to be jerking them around. Most boys are telling you to jerk them around and jerk them around. <laughs> you don't have to be in the stomach. Yeah. Deafness. Never heal anybody deaf. Never heal anybody blind. So just going through this with you guys, okay? I'm going to make sure people know that on the video. Um, deafness. Command healing the specific cause of the condition. Are they missing some of the bones? You know, um, that are in the inner ear. Um, do they have an accident? Uh, do they have an eardrum rupture that needs to be, you know, mended uh, in prayer? But deaf and dumb spirit and spirit of deafness. What Dr. Christian and Dr. Robin say, and they healed a lot of deaf people, deaf, deaf, is go after the guy again. Yeah, bring your seat. Oh. Um, go after a spirit of deafness. They've never seen a healing unless you go after that demon. <coughs> I have two people already that I have to go that route to go. And I think and I think it is a spirit. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah, and they say it's hundred percent a spirit. Yeah, because there's two people that I'm talking about. I mean, oh my gosh, it's so one is so obvious. Okay. That when she's in the middle of praise, it happens and it comes and it just you know, she's holding yeah. on to that ear because it's hurting so bad. So I'm going to be a <coughs> change in the prayer. Let's just hold off on that. You just put the receipts down. So y'all need to write that down, please. That always go after a spirit of deafness. With uh, deafness. <laughs> go after deafness for deafness. Because, um, like I said, they, it's always been a demon. Um, you uh, and, and one more thing about a deaf and dumb spirit. The deaf and dumb spirit, it does cause deafness. It also causes epilepsy. But it also causes people to not hear the word of the Lord. Okay? So, remember when the Lord was ministering to um, people and he would speak in parables? The reason he spoke in parables is so that the deaf could not hear, the blind could not see, and the dull of heart could not understand. They had a deaf and dumb spirit that prevented them from hearing the spiritual word of God and that did not allow them to understand the word of God. So I believe a deaf and dumb spirit is tied to a religious spirit. That's wow. my personal opinion. So know that. Now this is where it's important. Are y'all hearing me? Okay. If you have a person that will go to church, go to the furnace, whatever it is, week after week after week and they're never hearing what is being said okay or they're not understanding what is being said they may be bound by that demon so this is not in the book this is not the notes y'all need to know this okay and i in fact i have had people that oh, how can they not be hearing how can they not understand and the Lord would tell me it's a deaf and dumb spirit, find it, and then all of a sudden they can understand. Also, deaf and dumb is tied to unbelief. Okay? So often when you're dealing with unbelief, that person has a deaf and dumb spirit, especially if it's really strong. All right? That is good because uh, this deaf and dumb spirit, what happens to is when we're bringing the word forth, and it's very important, very interesting. It's all of a sudden, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. It just drives the person mm -hmm. away. Right it sure there. can, and then an Antichrist can do that too. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> the Antichrist spirit can cause people um, to try to keep interrupting what you're saying. So know that. Uh, are y'all writing this down? Mm -hmm. I am. Y'all might want to be writing this down. I'm telling you stuff that's not in the book that I've learned yeah. through <coughs> practice. <That's> so, <coughs> The spirit of Antichrist, what it'll do is often when you're ministering to people, it'll be that one person that's in the room or in the vicinity or the person themselves that constantly interrupts, makes noises, whatever it is, activity to try to prevent the person you're ministering to from hearing what you're saying. See, the thing with the Antichrist spirit is it vexes the saints. It's very irritating, the Antichrist spirit. And uh, it, it vexes you, like you know. It's like, would you leave the room, please? You know, is what you're, you'll start feeling. And you may have to ask them. I'm sorry, 
but can you take that conversation outside? Mm -hmm. You know, you may have to do that because God has a, an agenda for this one person and you've got the demon manifesting over here. <coughs> so you may have to be bold enough to say, I'm sorry, can you step over there or something so I can have a conversation and do it in a nice way, obviously. That happened to me. That happened to me. He was sitting in the middle of the floor. Uh, I don't know what he was meditating on, but he was very distracting. And I said, I want to ask you this question, please. Just tell me honestly. I said, do you believe in the power of God or, or do you not? And he says, I'm going to be honest, Mary Alice, there's times that I do, and there's times that I don't. And I says, because if you, if this is the time that you don't, I says, you need to leave so that we can pray freely. Mm -hmm. Because I tell you, it's a, a nuisance. Well, and there are certain religious denominations that are ran by that spirit. I'm just going to be straight yeah. up with you, Jehovah yeah. Witness. Yeah. When you're dealing with Jehovah Witnesses, you're dealing with an antichrist spirit, okay? Mm -hmm. So um, a lot of their followers followers will have it. I believe the Mormons have it too, I'm not that 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 But um, and then uh, even some religious people of denominations we wouldn't think because remember, antichrist is against the anointed one or against the anointed. So when you're speaking, you're releasing testimony and the the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and they begin to resist you, okay? So the Lord encountered it with the religious people, with the Pharisees. So don't be surprised if even in what you would call Christian mm -hmm. denominations, that when you're delivering the anointing, they begin to manifest or resist you. Okay? So just don't let it catch you off guard. The dumb and deaf spirit is usually involved with deafness. And then you might, after, one thing we feel when you cast out a dumb and deaf spirit, it will try to cause as much damage coming out as it can. We've had people in the past where they felt like a tearing mm. as it came out. Sometimes they'd have blood. I don't want to mess y'all's dinner up, but in their vomit. And so um, what we'll <coughs> usually do is when we're, especially this spirit, we will release a healing <coughs> into the body, but also you might have to heal the auditory nerve, you know, the hairs in the ear and all that stuff, any of the damage there. Um, now, Blindness, Dr. Harfushes have also said it's a spirit. They always cast it out. And um, so uh, cast out any spirit of blindness, command the eyes to open and see, and then uh, any specific causes. So you might need the healing of retina, cones, rods, and nerves, healing of the optic nerve, or healing of inflammation of the optic center, like from macular degeneration. What I find is actually breaking the curse of some of these sicknesses is important. You'll find that things pass down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, cataracts, just been healed of that, praise God. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, command healing the specific cause of the condition. And I guess it's a limited or drying up blood and fluid in the eye in a certain area which causes the lens to begin to cloud over. So, he says that. Um, command the blood and fluid to flow through layers of the lens. And so although I've never healed a blind person, I've never healed a deaf person, I've been healed of cataracts. So I do have a little bit of uh, knowledge there. I've never prayed for anybody with glaucoma. Um, you know, too much pressure inside the eyeball. Uh, eyes being crossed. Um, I guess that's a muscular thing. So he talks about you know, commanding the muscles to be strengthened. Mm-hmm. This one I'm going to go after next. Now, as we're going through some of these, because we're going to touch on them, which one are you passionate about? Because I want you to mark it, and, and I want you to begin to say, Lord, send me these people. You know, show me how to heal them. Send me these people. So pick one that you're very passionate about. Um, what surprised me is he said astigmatism. You can cast out the spirit of astigmatism, and I never saw that, so um, that's what I've been going after any of that with my eyes. Um, nerves and muscles to focus and function, blah, blah, blah. Now, arthritis. Let's spend a little bit of time on this and asthma. Um, you will find with arthritis, typically there is anger, unforgiveness, especially bitterness, because bitterness in the Greek member means poison or caustic. It's very acidic type of person, and so it causes an inflammation, a body inflammation. Now, sometimes so, arthritis can be caused by an injury. 
So my grandpa had arthritis in his neck, one of the least bitter people that I've ever met. And so it was a past injury. So when you're dealing with people with arthritis, especially like if it's in one place, like let's say they might have it in their shoulder but nowhere else. Well, have you ever had an injury there? <clears throat> I have. You know, so make sure that you're not just assuming that the person's bitter because that usually is the case. But I will tell you, systemic arthritis <coughs> all through their body is typically that. It is not an age disease, okay? It's not because as you get older, you're supposed to have arthritis. It is not a normal process of, um, you know, aging. Just want you all know that. And could it be, could it be that all this here... It doesn't seem to apply to my mother-in-law. I've never, I have never seen her angry. I have never well, seen her bitter. Well, that doesn't necessarily but, mean. But my question was going to be, Sherry, is it be, uh, could it be that some of us suppress all that? We well, try not to show it to anybody. We hide it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's what he says, because it can be anger, unforgiveness, and bitter toward yourself. And so, um, what I find, and what I look for actually sometimes is. If that is suppressed and if it is inward, it will manifest as arthritis, but also depression. Mm -hmm. That can sometimes happen because depression is anger tur turned inward. Mm -hmm. But some people are just really, really nice and yeah. sweet, and so they won't say anything and then they'll end up mm -hmm. with things. Or it can be a generational curse. Mm -hmm. So they can be the least bitter person, yeah. but it passes down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, like my, my great grandmother Wheeler had it, and everybody says she was the neatest lady. But just by hearing, she had rheumatoid arthritis, but just by hearing how some of the things that happened to her as a child when she was younger, I knew there was trauma because she was in a wheelchair by the age of 30. And no one at my grandpa didn't get it. Now, my, my um, great uncle did, and uh, our grandpa's brother, and he, was, he tended to be angry. Okay? So, you, on all this, you're going to have to be led, you know, on what's causing it. Um, if there is a person where you think, man, they don't seem bitter at all, you might ask them, do you have hurt or wounding that's very deep on the inside? That way you're not like, mm -hmm. you know, you're bitter, you know. So, if the prey does not recall any event for forgiveness, uh, or any person he needs to forgive, including himself, have him pray a general prayer of forgiveness of others and of himself, and then have him renounce the spirits of anger, resentment, and bitterness, and break their power over him and cast them out. Then he has the demons. So you want to cast out spirit of arthritis, spirit of inflammation, and spirit of pain. Now, I believe that sometimes arthritis can be caused by food choices, too. Okay? So, if you don't see any results when you're praying for arthritis, ask about the forgiveness and stuff, but also say, okay, um, do you notice pain worse after anything you might eat? Well, they're like, well, no. Okay, I want you to note that. You know, every time you eat, check your pain level, and then after you eat, do you have more pain, and then call me. Because, seriously, diet is playing a big role nowadays. So, command all pain to leave, all inflammation to leave, and all swelling to be gone. Um, now, asthma, asthma and allergies both are tied sometimes to a spirit of fear, okay? So anxiety, stress, so with asthma, command the spirit of asthma to leave, anxiety, and any generational spirit to leave. Have you noticed asthma runs in the family, okay? And then any spirit of allergies to leave because typically that asthma is caused by Allergies. Like I've never met a person with asthma that doesn't have allergies. Mm -hmm. It's a stuff that's crazy, you know, like plastic or something. <laughs> so, um, but you want the immune system to be normal. So command the immune system to function normally when you're praying for them. Now, carpal tunnel syndrome. Go ahead. Actually, I was, they don't mention it in here, but I've been probably because my own stuff. But I've been kind of asking God about obesity and he said that it's tied to poverty it's part of the spirit of poverty but it, you said the other night something caught me it's, you said it's a disease it is and it runs in families mm -hmm. and so i was like i wanted to kind of learn more about that because i want to 
that's why I'm passionate. I want to overcome that because that's what I want to help other people to overcome. Right. Like that's something really That's really good. Yeah, obesity is labeled a disease. Mm -hmm. And um, I would personally, it, it really depends on the person because like for some people they're obese because of certain health problems. Um, so you're obviously going to be led, but obesity to me is a byproduct of gluttony, which there is a spirit, and that actually falls under, if you want the strong man, whoredoms. Whoredoms? Mm-hmm. W-H-O-R-E, dumbs. <laughs> D-O-M-S. It's a strong man. That's a, quite a name for that. Yeah. Hydrosponsor? Mm -hmm. W-H-O, whore, okay. basically, and then doms, D-O-M-S. So, um, well, that's a spirit that it's a strong man, and it's strong mentioned in the man. Bible. And so, boredom mm -hmm. is any excess. Uh, it can be love of body, love of food, love of money, um, love of shopping, anything like that. And typically, when I, in the past, have gone against any bondage to addictions, I'll go after boredoms too. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that gluttony is a sin, overeating is a sin, but I think it also manifests as, as eating things you know you shouldn't. So what happens is, and it's very deceptive in the way it works. So like a lot of times when people have this spirit or if they struggle with obesity, um, number one, we do want to approach it as a spiritual condition as, and as something that can be healed, too, because it is labeled as a disease, it is a name, so we don't want to be judgmental and make judgments on the person that they put themselves in this mess. Because when you're praying for someone with an addiction, you know, yeah, they might have messes, but I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm praying for someone with addiction, I'm not thinking, well, they've made their bed. You know, so they can, like I don't think that way. So you you want to approach a person that struggles with obesity the same way, okay? But what I have found is there is a deception that. People that struggle with that, or maybe that have that spirit, have no idea how much they're eating or what they're eating. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the way I began to discover this was with the training. And so people be like, you know, I'm struggling my way all these years, blah, 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 blah. And so I'm like, well, what are you eating? Well, I don't eat that much. Like, I, you know, I might nibble for something on breakfast, and maybe lunch, and then I have dinner. Well, what do you have for dinner? They tell me, and I'm like, no, 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 no. There has to be something somewhere that you're doing. Well, once they write, everything down, <laughs> then I find out that one meal is 2,500 calories, plus they've been eating like little pieces of chocolate throughout the day and chips, so they never, like, it doesn't compute. It's like a blindness to a little bit is adding up mm -hmm. to a lot. Okay? <coughs> or there can be just an ignorance of food and not understanding that one cube of cheese is 150 calories, and they eat, you know, tons of it. You know what I mean? So some of it's ignorance of what they're eating, but some of it, I swear, people are blinded to where they just have no idea what is going on. So I think it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I like to go after with people that struggle with that or I pray for is a hatred of oneself. Because I find they always have it. I find they think they hate themselves because they're obese, but actually the hatred of themselves caused the obesity <coughs> because the obesity is a way to hide <coughs> themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's important. Um, hatred of self, my personal opinion, is very much tied to obesity. Yeah. Uh, shame. There can be a lot of shame. Again, they think they're shamed because of their uh, weight problem, but actually the shame caused the weight problem to hide. So there's fear, shame, hatred of self, all of those can play a part. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Um, I know it's not everybody, but when people are using, when they recover, they start getting big. Mm -hmm. Because the spirit of addiction hasn't been cast out. <coughs> so they, use it for they quit, which is great, mm -hmm. but they're just replacing it yeah. with something else. It takes two things. You have to retrain your mind, which will recognize patterns you're falling into, where you just replace what you gave up, right? Mm -hmm. And then you also have to cast that sucker out. Anyone that is dealing with addiction has a demon. They're going to have a spirit of bondage. That's a strong man. So what happens is they quit one thing and then replace it with food. Um, or they quit one thing and then replace it with shopping. The reason why is the soul issue has not been dealt with. So you know, like if someone's going to AA meetings like for the rest of their life, that's a... 
that's an addiction that becomes. I think so. You know, my sister when she quit drinking, um, hers was to numb pain. You know, you don't want to deal with things, and so you drink so you don't have to deal with it. It's an escape thing. Well, um, uh, when she quit, she was going to go to AA meetings, and she went to one, and she just didn't like it. It was like focusing on what's wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. So then she's like, well, I'll go to Celebrate Recovery, which is a great thing, mm -hmm. but it was very legalistic and binding to her, and, and the lady that told her to go became very controlling. It was really interesting. So then in a dream, Holy Spirit warned her, warned her, don't go to any of that. I'll set you free. Now that can be dangerous for a person that, you know, is drinking, but I knew that I knew that it was from the Lord. And sure enough, she got free by herself. The way she got free was Holy Spirit pointing out the wounding. So with addiction, which obesity is a form of addiction too, you got a spirit of bondage going on where people feel a lack of control when it comes to food. You'll you'll hear people talk about that. So um, what she did is Holy Spirit would highlight specific woundings as she journaled. He would bring revelation and healing. She would record that and before she knew it she was fine. And she didn't replace it with anything. She did get a little carried away on exercise and God pointed that out. So the way to I guess the thing with obesity and addiction and stuff like that is we can release healing, we can cast out the spirits. But more than likely, when you deal with stuff like that, you're going to be dealing with soul wounds. And the top soul wound is father. Okay? So dad wounds are where addiction usually occurs. Mm -hmm. Then another thing that I like to do is command the brain chemicals to balance out. Because serotonin and dopamine, those two hormones are um, the ones that play a part in addiction. Okay, so dopamine is the one that's a pleasure-seeking hormone. So when when you eat, okay, like they've done studies. When mice, well, let me go back to this. Well, no, let me tell you about the mice. The mice had the same brain activity eating sugar and foods they liked as mice that were on cocaine. Okay, so the brain reacts the same way. When they put monitoring, you know, things on people's mind or heads and they showed them pictures of sugary food, that center of addiction lit up like a Christmas tree. So they're all encompassed in that. And um, so it's the dopamine. And the reason dopamine's affected is dopamine is a hormone that requires to be loved. Okay? So whenever you are generally loved by someone, you release dopamine. Mm -hmm. So if someone you love or someone that's supposed to love you doesn't, your body will find a way to get dopamine. It's a survival. And so often people turn to addictions because it releases dopamine. And then serotonin is a feel-good hormone. So when you're dealing with people with cigarette addiction, they need a healing of serotonin, a supernatural healing, because when serotonin drops, they crave the cigarette, and then it goes back up. Serotonin also causes chocolate cravings, sugar cravings. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff. So healing of hormones is very important. Yeah, I mean, for the past couple of weeks, um, I keep thinking about cigarettes, and I like, want one really bad. Like, I want one so bad. And I haven't smoked in like and you don't. a long time. No. You don't want one, but your body is saying because mm -hmm. there's a shift occurring mm -hmm. and it's trying to get that pleasure response. And it's the same with chocolate. Like, I constantly mm -hmm. want chocolate. It's Nothing horrible. should control us but God. And mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it is a form of slavery. And um, <coughs> But yeah, so there's, like a, there's a lot involved. Um, but definitely, uh, again... Um, you're going to deal with soul wounds when you're ministering to people with addictions, even obesity. Um, I usually will ask people about their relationship with their dad. Okay? If they're like, oh yeah, my dad was never around or my dad did that, I will then release the father's love. And usually I will phrase it actually, God's love. Because father or dad can bring a yeah. bad memory. Um, and then... Uh, cast the demons out, bondage, whoredoms, a lying spirit sometimes is involved, um, and then a healing of the hormones. Um, now, 
Uh, God may not have you do any of that, though. When I was delivered of cigarettes, he had me quit first, and then just cast out a spirit of bondage and worms, and I was done. But I think the reason it was a little bit easier for me is I knew my dad loved me without any doubt whatsoever. So I didn't have that, you know what I mean? Like, it was just different. I think that's one reason I never got addicted to drugs or alcohol is because I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt. So, um... My mom's on the other hand. No. <laughs> but dad, yes. So anyway, does that answer some questions? And self-hatred, shame, look for those things. But, you know, I've been pondering that obesity thing too because it is labeled a disease. I'm like, man, if obesity is a disease, then we should be able to release a supernatural healing to where they no longer crave foods, they no longer have those things, um, and, and that the weight begins to melt off. Right, it's been years now, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, okay, God, I know there's something up. Like, what is the hindrance? I know that I, I have a lot of retraining of my mind. Right. And I know that I'm still um, learning to love myself as he loves me and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. But I was like, oh, God, we really, I need an acceleration in this because it's causing external problems, and it's causing other things. And... Um, all the stuff I have to buy every month, the, the for for the doctor and whatever, it's just it's just becoming such a a bigger problem than it needs to be because you know I've been delivered of drugs and alcohol and all these other things. I was like, this shouldn't be a big deal, you know, mm -hmm. but it's causing a it's a hindrance, and uh, I feel like it's a hindrance in my ministry, and I want I want to have and I want to overcome that because. I know a lot of women who are going through the same thing and men. Well, I would just ask God to give you the keys and stuff because if that's a passion and that's your assignment, mm -hmm. and so as you go through the journey, you need to be writing down what you learn. That way, when you are on the other side of freedom, you can administer that to other people. Yeah. Like you'll have those insights and those keys. Sometimes God will actually take us through a process to teach us that so we can show others later. Mm -hmm. I've seen him do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I know a person that, that has that problem, the obesity, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of addictive behaviors, mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And then when she doesn't get it resolved with the obesity or whatever that other addiction is, and she doesn't get it resolved that <coughs> she's asking for or praying for, uh, she's even gone to the point of cutting. Yeah. See, when you cut, you release dopamine and serotonin. So it's a numbing of pain. Anything that's addictive behavior is a numbing of pain. So you can you can lop off the branches all day long, but until you get to the root of the tree, mm -hmm. why is the pain there? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's not much you can do. And so, um, but you know, like the Lord, the neat thing about Him is when He would heal the sick, I think often He healed their soul. And so. Um, you know, where are we at right now? Well, where we're at is there might be some emotional wounding and things that need to be dealt with, but our goal should be that by merely releasing the word of healing, it goes into that root and takes care of the meaning. Right, awesome. You know? Yeah. Now, um, carpal tunnel syndrome, I was healed of that, so I do have some authority on it. Mm -hmm. um, mine was typing. I never corrected the way I type. I just got a healing and that was it. Um, uh, so, <laughs> I don't know, I mean, I encourage people to change the way they type. I never have. Um, but you can uh, call it, you know, the wrist uh, tunnels to open up, release pressure. I remember I used to go like this, just trying to get pressure oh, yeah. off that. Um, inflammation of tendons, nerves, and vessels. There's a lot of people with carpal tunnel syndrome. A lot of people. Um, Command a spirit of inflammation to leave, spirit of pain to leave, the pain to go, and scar tissue to dissolve. Mm -hmm. um, what I did is I said, Lord, you told me to write books. I need to write books, so I ask you to heal me of carpal tunnel syndrome. In Jesus' name, thank you, amen. And the pain <laughs> left and everything went away. And that was, Kent was four. So maintained it for, you know, 20 years. And then had a couple attacks with the Emmy, you know, would try it. And I'm like, no, it's been too long now. <laughs> so go oh, away. Both legs. Never prayed for that. Um, we do live in cowboy country. <laughs> so we might. Fever rebuke. <clears throat> He's got other stuff and that's fine to heal the unknown cause of fever or heal the known cause or 
I don't cause a fever, the infection to be healed, but guys, rebuke fever. Um, because that's what Jesus did. So <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Sciatica, um, it can be a, a spirit, we can pray for healing. I find people with sciatica have very poor posture. I've been pondering the posture thing because mm -hmm. I, I've been more everybody's a little straightening. Yeah. I've been more aware of it since I've been training because all kinds of pain started showing up in my in my body after I began to train mm -hmm. because now my poor posture is not an asset and it's showing up 42 years of it or at least you know 30 something. <coughs> mm -hmm. So I've actually been asking God to heal my posture. So uh, and I've been making some really good progress, but you have to, like, even though you sit, like you have to literally retrain yourself. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you can do this, but I, I think it'd be worth a shot. When people have sciatica, ask God to heal their posture. I mean, He straightened the lady with the spirit of infirmity, but also uh, the fluid in the disc. It can get, you know, like they can get a um, ruptured disc or, or whatever, and that puts pressure on that nerve because it comes out through the front of the body, so it can put pressure mm -hmm. and stuff. So they might need healing of their discs. So just be aware of that um, when you're dealing with sciatica. I had a, one lady that she had it so bad um, that her right leg, I think, was paralyzed. The way she got it was trying to lift a um, washing machine. Mm. Uh. Yeah, so injury can play a part uh. too. So I asked them, well, did any injury occur? Which you know, is in the preliminaries. Um, but injury <coughs> can cause it and then discs. Cracked tailbone, I had one of those, um, was prayed for, it was gone. I used to have pain. I'd sit on the floor and um, I'd start hurting really bad. And if I was like, Lord, my, I don't want a cracked tailbone anymore. Yeah. And then it just stopped. <laughs> so I was actually like a baby. Like I didn't even know that I, people, I, I didn't cast the spirit of pain right now. I would now, but I didn't know to do that. <laughs> so they, these are guidelines. You know what I mean? I mean, we've had people healed because we were laughing so hard we couldn't even get the words out and they were healed. So the Holy Spirit does whatever. Right. 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 But I like it because it's just general guidelines. Varicose veins. I've never prayed for varicose veins because I didn't know yeah. to pray for varicose veins. So I didn't know they were painful. Had no idea. I didn't, I didn't know any of that. So that's kind of fun. Well, not fun. But that would be fun to pray for and see go away. I want to be checking out the women's legs. The veins already popped out. Like my mom yeah. fell yeah. out. There's so there was that spider veins too. Is that what that is too? Like those little veins on your yeah. It's the best part. Yeah. Right. Well, that's funny because I started. Into, I started getting them on my yeah. um my knees. I think at one point I'm like, no, you can't. Yeah. 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 Ye
And without even thinking, Sherry, I just went, I hit in there. And I said, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't be messing with my husband's heart anymore. Without even like, and then I said, oh, no, I wonder if I hurt him. You know, I forgot about the steps. She almost left me over. Did you get abused, Bob? Yeah. You need to kill him. <laughs> growth is visible um, or if there's swelling things like that but there's gonna be some things you're not gonna be able to know so here's what you do uh, he says I think it's the yeah third paragraph sometimes a prayer prayer for healing may result in manifestations of pray e or even the pray er can recognize such as trembling fluttering eyelids heat sweating tingling and electricity okay so again asking you know, do you feel anything in your body especially in the area excuse me in the area <laughs> Um, so here's the, the thing though, sometimes healing can have occurred and no one even knows mm -hmm. until they go to the doctor and they're just <laughs> as shocked as you are, you know? Um, kind of with my foot, it shocked me, didn't even know, except pain was gone, that should have been a clue. Um, okay, so it says, since a prayer is proceeding without the signposts that show whether or not healing is occurring, even as he is praying, he might want to be quite thorough in his prayers. He might want to cover all the bases and even spend some time just soaking the prayee in love and prayer and spend some time praying in tongues. Also, you may want to make sure to have some time to quietly listen to the Holy Spirit for any guidance the Holy Spirit wants to give on. Follow any leading of the Holy Spirit. For example, if you receive an impression that there's been some kind of event in A's life, such as an accident or loss of a family member or some occult experience, okay, that's important. He should inquire of A whether indeed such an event has occurred. If it has, the prayer can be sure that the Holy Spirit is telling him that that is in connection to the illness. So he's not just showing you stuff to show you. He's showing you the root. Okay? Um, and then, here's something too, is I think you don't even realize it's relevant. Like a lot of times people don't connect the cause to the effect. Right? So sometimes God has to put those two things together. And it's really neat when he, he does. I've seen in the healing rooms where they're like, that is when it started. You know, they never, it never clicked. Bam. That's when they had arthritis. Bam. That's when they had fibromyalgia. Which fibromyalgia, by the way, is a demon. It's typically, typically caused by a, a relationship trauma. And... With women, often it's caused by an inability to nurture. Either they were not allowed to nurture, nurture because they were in an abusive relationship, or they didn't know how. But it's basically where signals, pain signals, are sent to the muscles constantly. Okay, and there's usually a lot of self hatred, a lot of self hatred and rejection involved with that. Well, I've had that before I stopped eating gluten. Well, and it can be diet. But. Mm -hmm. and then, but I've noticed a lot of overweight people have it. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. Which self hatred. Yeah. Self hatred. And a lot of people with fibromyalgia uh, are obese. Not a lot, but because the obesity causes inflammation in the body, it's systemic inflammation, which might be a good thing to add to pray. Right. So what do you do for the inflammation though, if you don't take anything? Command it to go, and pain to go, and spirit of fibromyalgia to go. But usually when I'm dealing with people with fibromyalgia, I'll ask them, 
Um, well, some of them I know they weren't able to nurture their kids. Either they were not able to emotionally, they weren't able to do it, or their spouse wouldn't let them, or their kids were taken from them. It's usually kids. It's women related to their children. Um, or they weren't nurtured. That can be part of it, too. Um, so he gives some examples of things that might trigger certain sicknesses. On page 89, anger, resentment, and unforgiveness associated with back pain. You might want to put next to that lower back pain is sometimes associated to uh, financial worry. We've had that happen repeatedly. Yeah, lower back pain. It's usually like in the small of the back. It sure does. <laughs> and that was thanks to Corey Lucero. When we were doing the healing rooms, we were praying for someone, and she looked at her and said, you have financial worry, don't you? And she said, yes, that's causing your back pain. And that was totally a wow. Holy Spirit thing. And sure enough, her pain left. I'm like, dang, that's cool. <laughs> it's every time I start to worry about my money, my your back, back hurts. Yep. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, oops, sorry, I repented. <laughs> we know about arthritis. Uh, stress and tension can contribute to many illnesses. Fear. Unforgiveness will block you. You might be able to get past it, so they got to forgive others and themselves. <laughs> Occult experiences, not renounced generally, can block healing. A curse, suspected or unsuspected, can block healing. Inherited, <laughs> inherited tendencies can cause or contribute. Uh, some feel that anxiety, self-hatred, self-rejection, <coughs> shame, guilt, and low self-esteem can contribute to and cause uh, illnesses. Um, okay. So he goes through cancer, cast out the spirit of cancer, infirmity, affliction. I also go after an unclean spirit. And as God's been showing, strife seems to play a part. So you might ask, you might want to write this down, that strife plays a part. Um, you might ask, do you live or come from a family that has a lot of strife, a lot of anger? Are you divided on the inside where you have like a lot of inner turmoil, uh, which is strife? So you might ask them those questions. And I need to get in prayer on that strife revelation. Um, but curse cancer at its root. Okay? Uh, so that's important. And for it to shrivel and die. And he's got that down in that last sentence. Also, every human has cancer cells. Mm -hmm. But if their immune system drops to a certain level, that's when they begin to multiply. So their immune system needs to be strengthened. So praying for that, but I also would recommend some vitamin D, <laughs> you know, eat some living foods, you know, change some things as well. But um, 